GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and we are finishing up our little exploration we've been doing on the order of operations. So take a look at the directions here. It says simplify, really generic uh, word that kind of just means do the math. <laughs> um, that's been indicated anyway. And, and then it says do not use a calculator. So we'd be simplifying this by hand if this came up on the GED. So notice that I have multiple operations going on in here. I have some exponents, I have some subtraction, I have a radical. Anytime you have more than one operation, more than one thing to do in math, you should simplify according to the order of operations. So what order do we go in in math? Not necessarily left to right, we follow the order of operations. So our first step will be to tackle any groupings. And then after that, you're going to want to cover any exponents. And remember that exponents include both the floating numbers and their inverses, so the powers and the radicals. And then uh, after that, we're going to do multiplication and its inverse, that's division. And then finally, our fourth and final step will be to do any addition and subtraction. Now, take a look at this problem. Uh, there is a grouping here, although it's not obvious to students. Remember that groupings can be inside of a lot of things, not just parentheses. Take a look at this grouping formed by this long radical. That is grouping all these numbers under here. So I got a lot to do in this grouping before I can handle anything outside of it. So let's go tackle the inside of this grouping. Now, looking at this blue portion I circled, even within there, there's more than one thing to do. But notice I have both exponents and subtraction inside the grouping, and we are supposed to do any exponents way before we handle any subtraction. So let's hit up those exponents that are inside my grouping. Well, 5 squared it means the same as 5 times 5. It's like making a square with a side length of 5 units. You'd end up with an area of 25. 5 squared is 25. And then 4 squared is the same as 4 times 4, or 16. And now I'll drop down the subtraction I haven't used it yet, the square root, I haven't used that yet, and the minus 3. Great, there's still one more thing to do inside that grouping. Inside this grouping, there's still some subtraction to do, so let's do it. 25 minus 16 is 9. 25, that part, minus 16 is 9. Well, I still haven't dealt with the square root, it's there with the minus or the 3. Now, I've finished my grouping, yay. Next step in the order of operation is supposed to be dealing with any exponents. And remember, exponents aren't just the little floating numbers, they're also their inverses, the radicals or roots. So I'm gonna take the square root of nine. The square root of nine, I'm asking myself what number times itself equals nine. That number, of course, is three. So the square root of nine is three. I'll replace that with a three. I'll drop what I haven't used, the minus and the three. And now there, I can finally just do this little last thing that I have to do, three minus three is zero. And if I was a good mathematician, I'd write that underneath, but I ran out of space, so I'll come write it over here. The final answer when I simplify this is just zero. Talk about an extreme makeover. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, just drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.